Hello, hope everyone's doing good today. Today we're going to be looking at a pen which I recently got and that's the Parker 51 Mark III. Um, I really don't know much about vintage fountain pens. The reason why I got this pen was because I kind of got a curiosity of what a vintage pen was all about. And even though this pen is a Mark III and it's made in probably around the 19, um, late 1960s or not early 1970s, um, it, you know, it's probably the oldest pen in my collection. So in my book, it can be classified as vintage in a way. So um, let's take a look at the pen. Um, first of all, starting from the top, the pen has a little what they call a jewel uh, on the top of the cap. Uh, essentially, it's it's just a plastic piece which is actually screwed into the cap, and that that's actually the part that keeps the the clip attached to the to the cap. Um, it's not an actual jewel. Um, you get the clip, which you know, according to lots of uh, guides which I read can be used to signify how old or which version of the Parker 51 you have. Mine, I believe, is what they call the long uh, long arrow version, uh, which dates this to be like a later model pen. Uh, again, if I'm saying something wrong, please, fe please feel free to correct me in the comments. You might not be able to make it out, but I my pen has a number three on the top down here, which after reading a few forum sites, still can't really figure out what the three means. Could be a production year or a quarter or something like that. And looking at the other markings on the pen, again, I'm not sure whether it will be easy to make out. It says one tenth. I mean, it has a Parker logo on top and it says one slash 10, 12 kg F. So what this means is that this cap down here is one tenth uh, filled with, uh, or rather plated with uh, gold. Sorry, I lost focus. Uh, so it's a gold. It's a gold plating. It's not a full gold cap uh, that equates to roughly one tenth of the material down here is is of twelve k gold. That's what it what that means. And then it says. Again, focus is a problem because it's such a small print made in USA. And the cap actually has little uh, kind of lines or stripes of, of fluting down here. So taking off the cap, um, just take note that inside the cap, you actually have four strips of metal, which, which is actually the the part of the pen that will help you kind of grab hold of uh, this part, this ring, to kind of uh, be a bit of a lock mechanism for the cap. And then, you know, you have the, the pen itself, which is very, very light barrel. And this, this is one way to identify a Mark III versus maybe a Mark I or Mark II, or even later versions of the Parker 51 is that my end of the barrel actually has a little hole down here and the shape is not rounded, right? And inside you get this pump filler um, and it says uh, to fill press ripped bar uh, firmly four times holding pen point down white point with soft tissue use only Parker ink the Parker pen company made in USA and it says here Parker 51. Okay, and inside this material, this sack, it's, it's uh, again, sorry about the focus. It's supposedly made of a very durable material uh, made by possibly DuPont that kind of ensures that this sack would last for uh, 30 years or more. And from, from my pen, since it's, it's probably coming up to 50 years, um, we'll see how, how well the, this holds up. But right now, I have actually pumped up um, the pen with some ink and seems to be working fine. 
The other thing to take note of is the pen is extremely, extremely light, right? So the whole, everything here is made of plastic, plastic threads down here and plastic inside uh, the cap, right? So putting it, um, the whole thing back, you'll notice that the section is not, uh, it's kind of shaped in a way whereby it's, it's kind of, you can feel that this area down here is slimmer um, than the kind of the rest of the, the pen. So this area kind of tapers down a little bit. And then you get the nib, which is, I'm having problems focusing today. Uh, it's a very, very diminutive nib. However, the shape of the nib is kind of unique, right? You can see that the sides of the, the nib actually have quite a lot of iridium, or you can see the, how the tipping is done. Um, and it's very narrow down here and then underneath, sorry about the focusing again, it's really, really small. So that's kind of a unique way of doing the tipping and there's no other markings anywhere on the pen. So I'm going to be writing uh, a little bit and the way I like to place the cap on this pen when I write is I like to place the cap, um, you know, underneath rather than on top, just to kind of maintain balance. It's just me, um, the way that I kind of uh, write with this. And you have to you have to post this cap because it's very to me it's very short. Um, so I'm going to post it when writing today. And the advantage of having a hooded nib like the Parker Fifty One. Uh, Suppose that supposed to be because it doesn't dry out that fast compared to like an exposed nib But this one did dry out a little bit. I have uh, inked it up with um, Sailor blue black or, or black if I, I believe so this is the Parker 51 mark 3 and like I mentioned it is the 1969 plus uh, Kind of range in terms of the year. The nib, I think the nib is a fine, rough, roughly a fine, right? And uh, it feels pretty hard. I mean, it's not, it's not soft in any way. Uh, in terms of smoothness, it's okay. And because the kind of, it's kind of a pen that uh, kind of makes you want to write small, right? For some reason, um, at least that's how kind of I, I get the feeling when using this pen. I, it kind of, it sounds kind of weird if I write big with this pen, right? So um, the pen is, like I mentioned, it's it's kind of decently smooth, but nothing spectacular for a gold nipped pen. Okay, um, so it's more of, the reason why I bought this pen is more of the, the feeling or at least knowing what a Parker 51 or at least original one kind of felt like. Um, I'm kind of, um, getting used to the feel because like I mentioned, it is very light. I mean, the, the cap is decently heavy um, and I'm kind of getting used to kind of writing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. It probably takes some time because of the balance of the pen. Like I mentioned earlier on, uh, there is kind of a, you know, heavy weight on the back of the pen. The other thing is, with the hooded nib, right, you kind of have to get the angle of the pen uh, correct, right, to write on the paper, right. Basically, 
there is no indication or very little indication of whether or not you're positioning the nib right in the sweet spot. So those are the two things which I am trying to kind of get used to with this pen. Um, otherwise, it's a very nice pen. You know, I don't have any more desire to get uh, further versions of Parker 51. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is just my introduction, my personal introduction to a vintage pen and how it feels like. So um, let me know, especially the, the Parker experts out there, um, let you know, tell me if you could tell me more about my particular pen, whether or not. Um, so one of the main things I was concerned about when buying a Parker 51 was there are so many variants. There are so many Franken pens whereby people would kind of interchange parts and so on. So if you know a little bit more about my pen, uh, please educate me in the comments below. So thanks for watching today's video. Today's video is being shot in 4K, which is why I'm going to keep this video short. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Please like and comment and subscribe. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.